بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى بركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله in the previous video we told you about the change to directed positive influence and how we going to implement change to directed positive influence ah because as we go through the 21st century and move towards the 21st 22nd century there must be a way forward for the ummah for us to participate in this global globalized world and how we can then be the leaders of this globalized world in the 21st century and change the perception that they have about islamophobia and the destructive forces of the takfir and those uh, is or boko haram and things like that so how are we going to do that i have explained to you that we have to move from destructive uh, approaches uh, that means negative destructive by force or by aggression by negative control and by the mass media, public, public perception, geopolitics and so on, which we have to have sabar. As we know that Islam is now targeted, the whole idea is to destroy the very basis of Aqidah of Islam so that there will be no Aqidah. Uh, attacking Muslims in, in a very uh, vicious and aggressive manner, but if we can give and return back with something that is good, that is directed positive influence uh, within our capacity, then we create a new movement in terms of social psychology for the world, for Muslims first and then for the world. So we can reduce the suicide bombing and the evil of uh, this uh, group of mad people that use the label of Islam. Because 99.9999999% of Muslims is not affected by all those things. But because we have a few crazy people, it doesn't represent Islam. So we must explain to the world regardless of the whole play by the mass media, public perception, geopolitics and so on, to demonize Islam. So we have to find to do that. And how we are going to do that? So even Prof. Madi Jenkins has given this idea of harnessing people's power. So in our chapter 4, again, it's chapter 4, Holistic Human Behavior and Loss of Learning. Chapter 4, the subtitle is Harnessing People's Power. Humanity has throughout human history been notorious, notoriously short-sighted when it comes to understanding the true nature of the difficulties we are facing and accepting the necessary solutions. So we are facing this whole globalized world, the mess that we have created over the Industrial, industrial Revolution and now that is destroying this whole uh, environment, the ecology, the uh, societal structure and so on. All right. There is unfortunately some chance that we will once again do too little too late. So we, we want to change but already it's too late. So when it's too late then we have to face a consequence. Eh? Many governments are doing a lot to be seen as attempting to provide solutions to the world's problem. But I don't believe that the efforts of some government are sincere. So Professor Mahdi Jenkins feels a lot of the government, they are very short-sighted. In fact, if you look at all governments in the world, they are very short-sighted. So you cannot blame them because the electorate wants short-term solution and they cannot think far ahead. For example, if you want to work on resolving climate change, all right, we can do it quite easily. For example, all the military spending of the world is something like two trillion US dollars per year. Two trillion, that's a lot. If we can cut down by one trillion, we have one trillion US dollar for planting trees, plant, uh, environmental, uh, remedial programs, so many things that we can do and we can actually with that kind of money, we can reduce the CO2 level and also reduce the temperature, rising temperature and the melting of the glaciers and so on. All we need to do is put one trillion every year and within 20 years, alhamdulillah, we have a wonderful planet. But can the government or can the leaders, global leaders do that? They are building more and more and putting more and more money into war machines. So, it is sad. But when it is too late, for example, when, uh, when the Ganges River go dry or the Mekong River go dry or when you have a mini ice age in Europe, the destruction of uh, many, many societies, then it will be too late. All right? But we have to do something. Eh? So, I don't believe that the efforts of some government are sincere. Even those efforts that may be sincere are still misguided. There is truly much more effort being put forth to make people believe that the social problems that are being faced and the solutions attempted that result in a realistic solution to this problem is not uh, available. So what shall we do? 
Alright, so if what we want to do, okay, I ha they have the solution here. So we talk about people's power now, harnessing people's power. These right thinking people could not by any means, at any point in human history, be said to represent the will of all the people. Eh? So we have to change from here to here. So now we have a small number, we can have a bigger number there. We need more right thinking people because the basic concept behind social change is through the spread of a new, more correct, holistic worldview. Once the world society see this truth uh, of this new reality more clearly, we have a common foundation for understanding that, that reality. Then that will be the new direction for the people. The will of the people who holds this new view shall be more powerful through directed positive influence than all the governments in the world. Eh? So basically, what we need to do now is, we Muslims, we must harness the power of the ordinary people. And this, we have the great opportunity now with all the cell phones, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and so many of these platforms that is now being used for negative perception. We use all these things, all right? All these things, all that global influences, we redirect them towards the positive redevelopment of the human psyche. And if we do that, then we have changed through directed positive influence. We will do a social engineering we do a social psychology of transforming the Ummah first. Remember, I'm doing this Post Islamic Psychology, our handbook. We are directing our effort to the 1.7 billion Muslims because we believe we must start the process going within the Ummah, this discussion going within the Ummah. These are all suggestions. You may have better suggestions, you may do more empirical research. Uh, because 10, 20 or maybe 30 years from now, there will be so much pressure on a global basis that if we don't change now as an ummah we would suffer uh, at a very very high cost for muslims that we will be oppressed and looked down upon as the pariah of the world we don't want that to happen but to do that inshallah we must then embrace this new idea of directed positive influence eh? the psychological term that we direct our roh our Nafs, uh, our feelings, our spiritual, emotional, and mental and physical self, all the domains that Allah has given us, our roh, our kalp, our akal, our jasad, direct it to a more balanced worldview. Practice that worldview sincerely. Yeah? I mean, it's not that I say something and I do another thing. No, no. We must embrace this whole thing. Regardless of the challenges that we face, we face tremendous challenges because of the oppression, because of the injustice, because of uh, the, the, the evil of colonization, the evil of uh, the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer, because of uh, and the evil of uh, the, the suffering of the people of the world today. Yes, we have many, many challenges. But regardless of those challenges, we must have the greed and the de determination to take positive ideals, positive idea to give them better. Because that is the way of the Sunnah. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, when he was really hurt tremendously at Yatrib, the angel says, you know, if you want to destroy the people, we, we could have destroyed them. But Rasulullah didn't because Rasulullah feels that these are the people who are ignorant. And in his uh, bleeding situation, uh, so badly hurt, he doa for that people to become good people and that happened. The whole of Yatrib became Muslims and become the torchbearer of Islam to the world. And this is beautiful. So this Sunnah, again, we must re-implement this Sunnah. We must avoid this whole idea of, you know, oh, I'm a good Muslim, you're not a good Muslim, uh, you're not a good Muslim, you are a kafir and so on. Forget about those internal little conflicts of the branches of Islam. We look at the roots and the trees of Islam, which is a goodly tree with a deep roots in Aqidah, in Islam, in Tawfiq, Tawheed, uh, and also in our uh, spirituality, that we can bring together a good understanding first among Muslims to have this idea of directed positive influence among ourselves. That how we communicate within ourselves, how we learn to love within ourselves, with our family, our small society, our country. 
and this burden falls on big countries like Indonesia where you have the majority Muslims and countries like Malaysia where you have a very multiracial society if we Muslims I'm from Malaysia if we in Malaysia can show that we can be just loving caring to all the people of this country whether they are Chinese or Indian Muslims Conf uh, Confucianists or Christians or atheists or whatever is the uh, belief system we can bring up a wonderful baladan uh, tayyibah wal ghafurur rahim we get a barakah and we do it on a small scale then built up country by country help our brothers and sisters in the Middle East and elsewhere that are in conflict killing one another show them a better model based on what? harnessing people's power and using directed positive influence so inshallah if you uh, doing social psychology or you are a sociology student or you are a uh, student of uh, civilization do more research and come to understand this beauty that we are trying to do da'wah that is post Islamic psychology a transcendent model to achieve peace, happiness and success and we are discussing chapter 4 of this book thank you